my God. Hello, angels. Hello. Oh, my babies. <laughs> so, name the dogs. What would you name them? Okay. Avenger, we're going to call you Nora. Yeah. Oh, what is this one? Huey. I like it. He seems like a Huey. He's just goofy. Hi, I'm Brendan Yuri from Panic at the Disco, and I'm gonna be answering your fan-submitted questions while hanging out with puppies. We'll see how well I can do. <laughs> okay, here we go. First one, hi, beautiful. Hi, beautiful. Okay, okay, let's answer these. Okay, you wanna eat this? Okay. Since you've taken to Broadway acting, is there any chance we could see you in other acting gigs, perhaps on TV? Well, if it involves dogs, absolutely. I will do a dog film. Um, a Marley and Me, but opposite, where I save all the dogs. That's what happens. Oh, you're so sweet, God damn it. Okay, pushing through, pushing through. What's your favorite tattoo and why? Oh, it's definitely, um, get out of there. You, you little stinker. You wanna bite, you wanna bite? Um, it's definitely my, uh, one that I got of my wife's eye inside of her favorite flower, which is the yellow rose. I love that one. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Have you seen Love, Simon? And if so, what did you think about Panic being featured in it? I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to very soon. I was very flattered. A fan had tweeted me a synopsis of all the mentions of Panic. I remember getting the email like a year and a half ago. We had talked about it and we signed off. It was under a different name. I can't remember, but I was just like, yeah, this sounds like a really cool story. And then sure enough, it ends up in the movie and like, that's the coolest thing. That's like, you know, the biggest compliment to receive, especially a movie like that. It's just so forward thinking, I love it. Oh my goodness, okay, okay. We have a few questions. Like, we'll just party for a little bit. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hi, hi. Mm. If you could have one Panic at the Disco lyric tattooed, what would it be and where would you put it? Oh geez, that's a tough one. Um, I would just put close the goddamn door and just right across my ass, you know what I mean? Okay, great. That's, that's what. Oh my God. Oh, you guys. Oh, it's dead. Oh, it's dead. Oh, you sweetheart. Hi. Hi. Let's get the keys. Let's get the keys. Okay. Do fans ever quote your vines to you when you meet them, and which one is your personal favorite? Yeah. Um, the first time I got recognized for not being in panic, I went to a movie, I stepped out, and these two really sweet girls came up and said, Hey, are you that guy from Vine? And it took me a second. It was the first time I was asked, and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah I am. Yes I am, and they started singing this coffee one that I had done. I need my coffee in the morning, baby. If I don't have it, it'll drive me crazy. So that was very cool, thank you. Uh, I think her name is Jessie, thank you. Let's see, oh my god. <laughs> You're just lounging like a little boss. Hi. Would you ever consider doing another Broadway show and what would your dream role be? Absolutely. I was raised in the Mormon faith, so I would love to be an elder Christ. That would be great. The only problem is I have a full sleeve of tattoos and most missionaries are in short sleeves, so we'll see. Makeup, makeup. What made you decide to call your fans sinners? Again, I, I grew up in the Mormon church and it was just kind of a little uh, juxtaposed to what I was taught. I was always taught that I was a sinner. I'm no good, not good enough for, for heaven. So I just think it's ironic, it's funny. Um, how did you know that Sarah was the one? First time I met her, um, she was not single. And uh, there was definitely a chemistry there, but I knew she, that she was down and very cool because uh, I made her a Lunchable with a Capri Sun, and she was totally down. It was like fancy to her, it's like hors d'oeuvres. It's like a canapes, it was great. If you could create or contribute to the soundtrack of any movie, <laughs> which one would it be? <laughs> Dog movie! Oh my goodness. I think I've said it before, I would love to do um, like the overdub and the foley for a Jason Statham movie, you know? Where I do like all the punches, and like do his, you know, yelling and stuff. If you could choose one or two bands to go on tour with you, uh, who would they be and why? Ooh, one or two bands. Let's do them. Um, <laughs> um, I'm just a massive Kendrick fan, Kendrick Lamar, that would be dope. Just let me open, I'll do five minutes of stand up, I'll sell your merch, whatever, bro. Let me, let me hang. What is the last thing you do before going on stage and the first thing you do coming off stage? Last thing I do before going on stage, I watch the band hit the stage and walk out. It's usually just a rush of emotions. 
Um, but right before that, we do our uh, pre-show shot to kill the hyper-awareness. We had done a uh, whiskey shot, and it just all made us grumpy. So we realized whiskey wasn't, the, no brown liquor before the show. So we do one shot of tequila, uh, and then right after we come off, um, we like a, my favorite way to come off the stage is an Elvis exit, which means you just go from stage right into a van, right to the hotel, into a shower and pass out. That's the best. <laughs> Dude, it's just a show for me. I don't have to do it. Was there an audition process for Kinky Boots? And if so, what was it like? Um, not really, uh, which I was nervous for. I was flattered that they would give me the part, but I was very nervous for it. Um, basically, I had uh, DB Bonds, who flew out to LA, he's the associate director for Kinky Boots. He flew out for two days. We did an hour each day of just reading through the script, talking about motivations. That was pretty much it. And we had about a week of rehearsal, teaching me the dance moves, putting my heels on, and then it was showtime, and uh, my put-in rehearsal, I dropped a glass on stage and it shattered, and my heart shattered. I was just like, <gasps> hopefully that was the worst of it. No, I would continue to fuck up every night. <clears throat> but it was fun, it was fun. Uh, what's the most memorable, uh, weird, thoughtful, et cetera, gift you ever received from a fan? Weird or thoughtful? I got a voodoo doll, which usually you would keep the voodoo doll, but I, they gave it to me of myself. So, you know, if ever I feel like, what is that called, flagellating in a way? I'll just poke the doll and come correct. What is the new album's overall genre? Hmm, is it gonna be all jazz, like as what you've mentioned in one of your live sessions before? No, every song is different. I love doing that. Yeah, they're all kind of all over the place. You know, there's one that um, feels like you're in a club, but it sounds like you're at a, at a uh, Hot Topic. I don't know, if Hot Topic were a club, I guess, yeah. Uh, would you ever consider writing another song with FOB? Absolutely, I love those guys. I love, I love Fall Out Boy, they're my homies. They've always been really inclusive, like including me uh, in all their stuff, and they're just big brothers. Oh, let's get the paper, let's get the paper. Um, what was some titles for this new album that you thought about but didn't end up going with? I was gonna call it uh, like a Lord Byron quote, which I thought was really nice. Um, it wasn't lo uh, love not man less but nature more, it was fame is the thirst of youth, which I thought was a really cool quote. But uh, yeah, it's pray for the wicked. I just thought that tied in everything actually that I was talking about. What was your first impression of Pete Wentz? Did you think you guys would have the relationship that you have now? No, not at all. Pete was very cool. He um, was in LA making his record with uh, Fall Out Boy. And uh, I remember walking up and being like, wow, this guy looks like a rock star. Um, and then we uh, went back to the practice space and played some stuff. Oh, that was a puppy fart. Solid, Alpo gas. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that we would, you know, I didn't know what was gonna come of, of meeting Pete and getting signed and all this stuff, so. Yeah, it's just it's gotten better over time. It's my big brother. I am dying to know how the performances differed between a Panic at the Disco concert and appearing as Charlie Price in Kinky Boots on Broadway. Very different. I'll say the biggest difference um, is that with a Panic show, luckily the fans, you guys, are louder than me sometimes, and you save me in moments where I might forget a lyric or a voice crack happens. But in Kinky Boots, you're up there, and spotlight's on you, and you if you mess up, everybody hears it. You're under a microscope, and that was very exciting. Coming from a person who deals with anxiety and wants to become a performer one day, how do you cope with anxiety on stage or even during the whole touring process? Very good question. I used to take medication, then I stopped taking it. Uh, just came to a, a, a realization that I didn't want to go there. So then I adopted the art of breathing, breathing exercises. That really ended up helping me a lot more than I thought it would, which is pretty great. So um, thanks for that question. I know performing can be very anxiety driven, so I believe in you. What is your plan for the future of Panic at the Disco after this album? I don't know. Um, I've talked about like doing weird stuff, like after the Broadway thing, building a show like that, taking it on the road, not necessarily with an album, but just kind of building the idea of a show. It wouldn't just be an album. I don't, I don't know, there's something there. There's definitely something in there. Favorite Fall Out Boy song or lyric? Right now, I like Church. That one's great. I get on my knees. Great lyric. Did you guys ever actually consider yourselves emo when you started as a band? No, we never did. But we listened to a lot of bands that were considered emo, so yeah, we were never offended by it. It's like, uh, if you wanted to call us emo, yeah, all good. Which person that you've met or which interaction that you've had do you think has had the biggest influence on how you want to be seen just generally as a person? Wow, that's a deep question. I'm a believer in the butterfly effect, right? Like, so if I, you know, everybody I come in contact with has an influence on something that will happen in the future for me. I got to meet President Obama and the First Lady. That was Michelle and Barack, man. That that was crazy. Waiting in line, I was so anxious, and we stepped in, me and my wife, 
And uh, watching her meet them first, I was just, this is actually happening, this is really crazy. Um, very tall, very beautiful people. Uh, shook my hand and I just kind of shuddered a little bit. I said, you are, you are just great and I'm a big admirer of yours and just thank you. And he said, that's a very snappy suit. I thought it was great. Okay, last one. Would you ever be a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race? I feel like it would be a perfect fit for you. Absolutely. That would be a blast, are you kidding? Um, I would love to uh, be a contestant on there too. Yeah, we'll figure something out. I just love to be in drag. Yeah, Avengers, my dude. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, you're the sweetest. Yeah, you're protecting me. <laughs> hey, I just want to thank BuzzFeed, man, for setting this up, because, uh, what? This is the dopest thing ever. <laughs> hey, by the way, if you guys want to adopt North Shore Animal League America, dude, you take all four. It's four times the happiness, bro. Come on. You're getting all of this, yes? I need this punch.